Ladies and gentlemen, this is Amos. I just want to tell you about something that happened to my friends Andy and the Kingfish. Andy found a nickel in an old trunk. It was dated 1877. So Andy wrote a letter to Mr. Wilton, a rare coin dealer, and right now Mr. Wilton is answering Andy's letter. Andrew H. Brown, care of the Mystic Knights of the Sea Lodge Hall. Dear Mr. Brown, in reply to your recent letter requesting the value of an 1877 five cent piece, the current market of this coin is $250. If you care to bring the coin in, we will be happy to pay you this amount. I hope our offer meets with your approval. Yours very truly. Is that all, Mr. Wilson? Yes. And I hope this Andrew Brown accepts our offer. I'd like to add this coin to our collection. Uh, get the letter right off. Yes, sir. Good morning, Kingfish. Well, good morning, Joe. How am I going to pay the mailman this morning? Any mail? Just one letter, Kingfish. It's for Andy Brown. I'll see the boy later at the pool hole. I'll give it to him. Well, I guess I better be getting home now and see if the battle axe got any lunch for me. See you later, old pal. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you, George? Yes, yeah, if I just me. Lunch ready? I just come from. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, thought I told you not to come out in that rig till I got something in my stomach. You just keep your big mouth shut. What's that letter you got there? A letter for Andy. From a rare coin dealer. Hmm. Maybe I better open that letter and see what they're writing the boy about. George Stevens, you ain't thinking about tampering with the mails, is you? Now, wait a minute. Let's think of this thing. You know I pay taxes. It's my government. What about? Well, if it's my government, it's my post office. And if it's my post office, <laughs> they ain't no how in a fellow opening his own mail, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Andy Brown, 1877, holy mackerel, Andy has got a nickel worth $250. George Stevens, it was bad enough opening Andy's letter. You ain't thinking about jipping him out of that coin, is you? Who, me? Innocent Stevens? <laughs> I'll say I is. Better not, because I ain't gonna stand for no more trouble around here. You understand that? And if you start jipping Andy or anybody else, I'm gonna break every bone in your body. Well, Henry Van Poder. Hello, Kingfish. Uh, have a seat, Henry. Charming to see you. Simply charming. Yeah, it is charming. I dropped Mrs. Van Porter at the beauty parlor and came right over as soon as I could. Now, uh, what's this I hear about Andy having a nickel worth two hundred and fifty dollars? That's right, Henry. I accidentally found out about it. Now all I gotta do is figure out a way to get it away from it. Well, knowing you, Kingfish, <laughs> that should be a minor operation. I know the boy got the nickel on him someplace, but how I gonna get his pants off so I can go through his pocket? Well, let me see. A man takes his pants off when he uh, goes to sleep. Or uh, when he goes to the doctor. Wait a minute. Doctor. That's it, Henry. Doctor. Say, I got a lot of doctor equipment that I got when the drugstore up the street burned down. Yeah. Dr. George Stevens. Henry, I think I was about to preform a nickelectomy. <laughs> King Fish, I've been expecting a letter that was supposed to, uh, 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 uh excuse me, Andy, can't you see I've taken a blood count here? <laughs> Three, add four, subtract two. Hmm, that's the most anemic blood I ever did see. Well, Andy, old pal, it's good seeing you. Uh, excuse the rubber glove, I just come from a big operation. King Fish. Huh? You mean to say that you is an actual doctor? Well, I ain't been flapping it around, but I've been taking a correspondence course in doctoring from that big uh, medical school down there in uh, uh, Baltimore, John Vanville. Oh, I don't hear about that place, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
So, what's the matter? Well, wait a minute here. Mm-hmm. 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 Kingfish, is you uh-hooing good or uh-hooing bad? Well, in between. Uh, better take another look here. Mm. I see you are suffering from a slight inflammation of the optimistic nerve there. Oh, me. Now, I don't want to worry you or frighten you or nothing like that. But if you got any reading to do, you better do it within the next two weeks. Two weeks? <laughs> hey, you, doctor, what must I do? Well, I can't tell until I look into it a little deeper. Uh, deeper? How deep has you got to look? Uh, pretty deep. Uh, take off your pants. <laughs> Wait a minute, Kingfish. If this trouble's with my eyes, how come I got to take my pants off? That's a secret of obstricity. So don't argue with the obstricital. Yeah, put that on. And hurry up, too, because I got a full schedule of doctor in here. So I think I'm going to have to squeeze you in between an appendicitis and a uh, loose liver. Uh. <laughs> Is you done located the trouble with my eyes yet, Kingfish? It ain't in your head, Noid. Uh, turn around. Well, uh, better take a look in this area here. Sure is dark in there. Wait a minute till I get my flashlight here. Andy, you hold this there while I run around looking the other side. Any light coming through all right? Ah, good, good. Yeah, well, Andy, I see the trouble now. It's with your eyes, all right. What you mean with my eyes? Well, after giving you thorough examination, I find that the root of your trouble is eye strain. Yeah, my boy, you done strained your eyes. Yeah. I know I ain't been seeing the way I oughta. You ought to see some of the gals I've been whistling at lately. <laughs> Now you give your eyes complete rest. Yeah, you gotta rest them at least an hour each day. Yeah, but ain't it kind of hard to rest your eyes without resting the rest of you? No, son. Uh, medical science done found out a way to overcome that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to shut out the light completely. Mm. Yeah, you got to shut out all the light. <laughs> I don't want you to see nothing. <laughs> now sit down. Uh, oh, not there, Andy. Not there. Here's the chair over here. Now you sit right here. Sit down there on the chair. Now just sit, just sit down. Yeah, yeah. Everything gonna be all right. Now just... uh, can you see anything? I can't see nothing. Right. Say, Kingfish, where is you? I'm scared. Now, 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 wait a minute. Now, Russ, sit down, will you, Andy? Sit down. Now, sit down there now. Now, just sit there and relax. Everything gonna be all right. Kingfish, hold my hand. Hold your hand? Yeah, hold my hand. If you don't hold my hand this second, I'm gonna take this bandage right off. No, no, don't, 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 don't do that. Don't, I don't do that. Uh, here on my hand. Now, just hang right on to it there. Hang right on to it. <laughs> ah, that's better. <laughs> Well, I'm sure it's cold. Uh, that's because I've been having chills here lately. Think, Bill. I know you was here, but it sounds like your voice is coming to the other side of the room. It just sounds like that way, Andy. The acoustic. I stand right here alongside you. Oh, good boy. Good boy. <laughs> you know, Kingfish. You was a real pal to stay so close to me when I was scared like this. Yeah, you sure is. <laughs> Mr. where your telephone? Right back there. I thank you. Mr. Wilton, look, 
I got that letter about the 1877 nickel. Yeah. And I got the nickel right here in my pocket. And, uh... <laughs> Holy smoke! I done dropped a ram nickel in the telephone. Say, Kingfish, for the last half hour, you've been awful quiet. You ain't did, is you? The rest of you. Andy, what is you doing with that crazy thing in your hand? <laughs> Amos, 30 minutes ago, the kingfish was on the other end of that thing. Yeah? Well, what is your pants doing down on the floor over there with the pockets inside out? Amos, my nickel. Wait a minute. This whole thing is a trick of the kingfish. He done got away with my rare nickel. Well, what you gonna do now, Annie? Amos, I'm gonna find that kingfish, and I'm gonna beat him to a pub. <laughs> and then I'm gonna beat up on the pub. <laughs> yeah, and now that you explain it that way, kingfish, I realize that you is my pal. <laughs> oh, yeah, Annie. I done it all for you. I only took the nickel so you would lose it. And I even made a deal for you to get $250. And the best part of the deal is, I only gonna take half the money. And I even count on taking the smallest half. <laughs> Kingfish, I don't know how to thank you. Uh, but tell me this. Where is the nickel now? You got it in a safe place? Well, yes and no. Uh, how come that no messed up in there? <laughs> well, Andy, old pal, the nickel is in the telephone coin box down in the drugstore. Whoa, whoa! Slow down, slow down. Something just kind of whizzed by me there, King B. It seems to me, uh, I heard you say something about the uh, telephone coin box. Well, it ain't nothing to get excited about. The nickel is in the telephone coin box down in the middle of the drugstore. Kingfish, I'm gonna bust now, you now, right in the nose. Now, now, take it easy. Calm down, calm down. We ain't gonna get nowhere fighting with each other. The reporting thing to do now is figure out a way to get it out. Yeah, I guess that's the thing to do, all right. Let me see. Now, when could you go down there and pry the box off the wall? <laughs> oh, I could go down there and pry that box off the wall. Uh, I could, uh... Hold it, hold it. What you mean is when can I do it? Well, you is the illogical one to do the job. Being the owner of the coin, you has got prior rights. I oh, is, huh? Yeah, so having prior rights, it's up to you to do the prize. <laughs> you know, King Ben, for the first time today, you is beginning to talk sense. <laughs> Come on, let's go down. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, hello. <laughs> well, here we is, Andy Opel. Kingfish, is you sure that we won't get in no trouble messing with that phone box? Of course not, Andy. You was only getting your own nickel back. You has got legal juice sprudence. I is, huh? Yeah, now you get in there, and I'll take the dangerous part. I'll stand guard out here. That's what I'm going to do. Ah, oh, Kingfish, you is a pal.
Don't make so much noise. Change this for me. I want to use the phone. Sure. Are you on duty today, Roy? I'll know in a few minutes. I have to call the desk sergeant down to the 32nd precinct. Oh. How you coming in there, Andy? Have it for you in a minute, Kingfish. Uh, is someone using the phone? Oh, it being used all right. A friend of mine used it. Yeah, well, uh, will your friend be long? I got to call headquarters. Last thing you say you got to call? Headquarters. Oh, you mean uh, Republicans or Democrat headquarters? Is you a politician or something like that? Police headquarters. I'm a plain clothes. <laughs> Certainly is a noisy diet on that phone in there. <laughs> hey, Kingfish, give me a hacksaw. I can't get the money back to it. You see, stranger? Hey, what's going on in there? Trying to rob the coin box? I've never seen a man before in my life. <laughs> hey, hold on a minute, Sue. And you, come on out here. You're both under arrest. Hey, mister, you can't arrest me. Kingfish, tell him what you told me. Tell him I got juicy prudence over everything. Don't worry, Eddie. They can't do a thing. They can't do a thing to us. Huh? They can't do nothing. I told you, Andy, they can't do a thing to us. Not a thing. They can't, huh? <laughs> Well, we ain't exactly slashing around in the full freedom. When they get us on that stand, they're liable to turn you again me and me again you. They'll have us cutting each other's throats. Yeah, you said it. I see that in the picture with Humpty Bogart once. And Andy, what we gotta do is stick together. And don't forget, we is all brothers in that great fraternity, the mystic knights of the sea. We got to be loyal to each other. Face this thing with a united front. All for one and one for all. That's the spirit, Kingfish. Shake. <coughs> Fifth court will come to order. George Stevens and Andrew H. Brown breaking and entering attempted robbery, destroying a public utility. The two defendants were apprehended at the scene of the crime with burglary tools. Violation, Section 498, New York State Criminal Code. How the prisoners approach the bench, please. Your Honor, he's the one what done it. <laughs> Wait a minute, Kingfish. Quiet, please. You have heard the charge. Are you represented by counsel? Uh, yes, Your Honor. We got a counsel. Yes, sir. He ought to be here. Where is a counsel for these two men? Uh, right there, Your Honor. <laughs> Your Honor, I'd like to say that him, the judge, is up there. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to have a plea of not guilty for these two crooks. As the stuff. <laughs> On what ground? According to the report, these men were caught trying to break open a telephone coin box in the presence of a witness, who also is a police officer of this city. Well, yes, sir, Your Honor. But they don't learn their lesson. They ain't never going to break open nothing in front of a cop no more. <laughs> yes, Isn't your name Calhoun? That's right, Your Honor. Algonquin J. Calhoun. And didn't I disbar you three years ago? 
But how much ground did we lose while our lawyer was in defending us? We're wasting much too much time here. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty, Your Honor. Uh, yes, sir. Not guilty? Well, uh, slightly guilty. In view of the defendant's refusal to enter a plea, I hereby order these two men Your to Honor, be bound over. I'm the arresting officer in this case, and uh, this is Amos Jones, a friend of mine. We have some evidence that has a bearing on this case. Evidence? Uh, yes, sir, Your Honor. I, I think there's been a mistake made here. Uh, these two fellows wasn't really trying to steal nothing. Uh, uh, you see this here nickel, Your Honor? Yes. In other words, Mr. Jones, these men were trying to recover this 1877 nickel from the corn box. Yes, sir, Your Honor. That's the whole story. Well, Mr. Jones, from what you and the arresting officer have testified, I believe that there was more stupidity involved here than criminal intent. Yes, sir, Your Honor. That hits the nail on the head, all right. In view of these facts, I'm going to dismiss this case. But I'm warning you two, you got off easy this time. But if I ever hear of your tampering with a corn box again, You'll end up in jail, I'll guarantee you that. Oh, no, sir. Don't worry about that, Your Honor. We has tampered our last tamper. It's dismissed. <laughs> oh, boy, it sure feels good to get out of here. Yeah, sure do, sir. You know, this is one place that ain't never quite seemed like home to me. And to me, the boy. Hey, fellas. Fellas. Uh, what do you want, Calhoun? I'm sorry about what happened in the court there, but if that old judge hadn't thrown me out the courtroom, I'd have got you fellas off in 90 days. Oh, shut sure, up, Calhoun. <laughs> well, then, you old fan, you still got our round nickel, ain't you? Oh, yeah, I got it right here in my pocket. See, there's a phone right there we can use. Uh, what does we want with a telephone? Well, here's the rare coin dealer's telephone number. Call him up and tell him that me and you will be right over to get the $250. Wait a minute, Kingfish. The thing that I has never understood is why has I got to give you half this money? Andy Brown, you made a verbal deal with me, and try and back out now, and I'll carry you right back in there to that coat again. All right, Kingfish. <laughs> Oh, me. Kingfish, what's the matter now? I done put the rare coin in the telephone. Do you mean to say that you done put the rare nickel in the telephone? Well, you got me so nervous I couldn't think. Well, you stupid bum. How in the world could you do a thing like that? You heard what the judge said about tapping with the phone boxes. Yeah, but Kingfish... Oh, you shut up. Andy Brown, as long as I live, I'm never going to speak to you again. Goodbye, you big dummy. <laughs> What number did you dial, please? Eldorado 06353. I'm sorry, there is no such number. I know it ain't. Uh, would you please return my nickel? <laughs>